Hey everyone, welcome to another installment on the Jeweler's Lathe project. Um, today I'm doing the tailstock. I finished most of the parts. I didn't actually get to finish the uh, the shaft on the tailstock. It's been, you know, busy for the holidays. So uh, yeah, hoping to get that done pretty soon. Um, so I'm going to start by putting this together and then I've got machining footage for all the machine components. I've actually got a separate video for the, uh, the sort of tailstock housing. And I thought it would be valuable to show exactly how I machine that because I've been saying this is a a manual machinable project and you know I realize I machined part of the headstock using the uh, the Tormac which is CNC uh, that was kind of before I decided to make this all manual I still maintain that it's manual machinable but I'm going to show you exactly how I did the tailstock so hopefully you know you can you can imitate that methodology on on the headstock so the tailstock is basically um, we've got this housing here with a brass keyway Hopefully you can see that. I know the black anodizing isn't awesome. Well, it's not awesome to film anyways. Uh, so I've got a brass key stock in here and this is actually a keyed stainless shaft. And so these fit together. So now we can slide without the tailstock rotating. Um, now that's held in place by these bushing caps here. So these are just oil light bushings and they're pressed into these uh, custom made flanges. Um, so I guess I can just go ahead and start putting this guy together. Um, keys got to go in first. That's, I mean, it, if I was making a thousand of these, I might uh, add some sort of ease of assembly features, but since I'm only making one, it's okay. Um, so. All right, so using the right sized Allen key, this is just a flange screwing on. All right, so now that I've got one flange on, what I can do is actually turn the whole thing around. Now I'll put the key in. Just like that and then start the shaft in so I just got the shaft from McMaster um, it was actually pretty dinged up when I got it so I had to do a little bit of filing to clean out the key so the uh, keyway can slide in it uh, I'm still anticipating it having to wear in a little bit but um, I mean it's pretty quick it's uh, brass key is pretty soft so it'll sort of uh, it'll sort of form itself against the, the keyway and end up in the right shape. I've got everything loosely put together here. I've actually got the flanges a little loose too because I want them to sort of um, find their uh, their coaxial positions together. Um, the reason I did an oversized bore in the middle with flanges and bushings on the outside is because I want to be able to adjust it later. All of the features on the bottom here are sort of positive locating features with the frame, which you'll see in a second, and they don't really allow for any adjustment unless you shim stuff. So I, I kind of like doing bearings on flanges because it really lets you uh, move things around. These uh, these bushings are actually so thin as well, they're sort of, they're less than a diameter long. So you can actually get a little bit of angular adjustment out of them as well. The last part's actually just this thumb screw for adjustment. So this actually goes all the way through to the top of the key. So when I tighten this, it'll increase the tension on the key and it can either lock the tailstock in position or it can just adjust the tension required to push it. So if I wanted to stiffen things up for a certain operation, I could use this. So that is the tailstock assembly. Now we can put it on the rest of the machine, which I can lift with one hand. All right, so this is where we left off last time. Um, you'll notice that uh, the base is actually anodized now, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, that's this component down here. And of course I got the tailstock components anodized as well. Um, so this fits on like that. <laughs> um, got three M6s coming in from the bottom. 
uh, if I can tip this over without it falling apart because it's not screwed together. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is actually screw the chip guard on first just to hold everything loosely in position. All right, so now the, the chip guard is kind of loosely screwed on, I can, uh, I can actually put these fasteners in. All right, so that is the bottom. Now, if we rotate it around, got these, uh, oh, the fastener's still stuck in. Got these M3s on the back. And the last screw is just the rear chip guard here. I guess that's where my Allen key went. Not good enough. All right, so that's uh, starting to look a little more lathe-like anyways. Um, instead of having an internal Morse taper on this, I'm gonna have an external Jacobs taper, and I'm just gonna say this tailstock is gonna be used with um, I think it's a zero to quarter inch Jacobs chuck and I'm okay with that if I want to change something up I can either make a new tailstock or I can make some kind of Jacobs chucky adapter kind of thing I was a little bit leery about drilling into here and trying to do a taper on the inside just because I'm not confident in my ability to do that properly so this this sort of bulkhead thing here is quarter inch thick steel um, so it's quite strong and the thought behind that was that if this thing's going to want to flex, it's going to want to bend like this. And so uh, such a large vertical mass of steel should make it nice and rigid in that direction. And then of course we've got a lot of aluminum on the bottom, so that should prevent it from flexing like this in the sort of yaw direction. Um, so hopefully that works out fairly well. Um, it's sort of, <laughs> it's main purpose to be totally honest, I guess, is just to block chips, but I think it'll, uh, It'll serve well as a structural support as well. So this guy's gonna get cut down to about five inches, I believe. Then I've got these holes on the back, which I can zoom in to show you. Yeah, so these holes are gonna be, uh, they're gonna hold uh, some brackets that are going to attach the levers. So I'm gonna have a basically a lever coming off of here. I'll show you this in the CAD, I guess. And uh, that'll be for the, tailstock. Then we have another lever system coming off of here and that'll be for the z-axis. Um, a lot of people have been interested in this project uh, following Patreon and uh, seeing the plans as they come out and stuff. A lot of people seem to be interested in using it as a more conventional machine, like a conventional lathe, or even a CNC lathe. So I think what I'm going to try to do is actually make it adaptable. So. Um, in my design, I'm just going to have a bushing in here and I'm going to have sort of a pusher rod that pushes along the, uh, the carriage, but it would be fairly easy for me to include a design for say a, a bracket and a motor or a coupling or something like that. And then you could, you know, go straight to CNC. You wouldn't have to worry about retrofitting it yourselves. There's a bit of focus. Um, so yeah, you'll see these holes actually had another purpose basically for machining, but, um, you'll see that in the next video. Um, this knob I had intended to um, leave smooth like this. It's sort of a it's a, a way of limiting your own fervor, I guess, for tightening things. Here, I'll zoom in on zoom in on it a bit. So yeah, I'd intended to uh, to leave this smooth. I just didn't want to tempt myself to over tighten it and strip something out. Although I do think I am going to either knurl it or put some pretty small lobes on it just so I can get a little bit better grip, but. We'll see how that turns out. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the tailstock assembly for the jeweler's lathe. So next we're going to see some machining on these flanges uh, on the adjustment screw here. And I think, yeah, definitely a separate video for the tailstock because I want to show every operation I did for that.